The Airy TV News broadcast crew and I, Delit Zahai, are now ready for your daily news briefing at 10.30 local time. But first, let us catch up with the major headlines. Activity assessment meeting on PFDJ in Northern West Region. Workshop on preventing harmful practices in Kashbaka Region. China blasts U.S. declaration of ironclad alliance with Philippines. Extreme weather shuts schools and cut power in South Sudan. On our local news, the PFDJ branch office in the Northern Red Sea region emphasized the need for stronger collaboration between government institutions and the community to ensure the success of development initiatives. This was highlighted during the annual activity assessment meeting for the year 2023, which took place from 4th to 16th March across the subzones within the region. The meeting saw participation from the subzones administrators, representatives from various civil servants and national organizations and other groups. These gatherings organized within each subzone provided a platform for presenting activity reports. The discussions covered reorganization efforts with PFDJ units, public and civil servants, contribution to the Martyr Stress Fund, support extended to martyrs' families, and the execution of training sessions and popular campaigns. Further discussions underscored the commendable efforts made throughout the year, acknowledging their significant impact on the forthcoming 2024 program. There was a call for an increase in organizational efficiency and achieve better results. The participants engaged in throughout deliberation on presented reports and adopted several recommendations. Key among these were the need to address the scarcity of potable water in certain areas and improve the provision of telephone, electricity and transportation services, especially in the remote areas of Galalo, Foro, Adobha, among others. The Ministry of Health and Labor and Social Warfare have recently organized a workshop in Gashbarka region targeting trainees with aim to eradicating harmful practices and adverse effect on the physical and psychological well-being of children and women. The workshop was attended by trainers from various subzones in the region, including Shambuko, Molki, Lalai Gash, and Mansura, along with representatives from Lime Ministries in the Gashbarka region. Its primary focus was to enhance community-based efforts to eradicate harmful practices. Mr. Franco Kubaba, Director General of the Social Service in the Gashbarka Region Administration, highlighted the gravity of the issue during the workshop. He stated that communities have been established in the region to address these harmful practices and furthermore he underscored the organized efforts at the workshop emphasizing the incidence of harmful practices are still not fully under control. Mr. Tsvagabur Gabrasilase, acting head of the Ministry of Labor and Social Warfare Regional Branch, reported that encouraging progress has been made to fight against female genital mutilation. He stressed that the introduction of community-based initiatives is crucial for the campaign's success. The organizers, organization Organizers, rather, on the training on their part noted that training equipped participants with skills and methods to combat harmful practices at the community level. They expressed their conviction that the trainees would achieve significant success in their effort to combat these practices. The Molki subzone in Gashbarka region from 18th to 10th March hosted a sport and cultural week dedicated to students celebrating a range of sports, cultural competitions, creativity, and educational activity. Mr. Tasfai Gabranagus, head of the Culture, Sports, and Health Unit at the Ministry of Education branch in the subzone, emphasized the significant impact of the week's activity on fostering a competitive spirit, creativity, and sense of responsibility among the youth. He highlighted that various of events have took place underscoring their importance in nurturing well-rounded and capable young individuals. Mr. Hiyabu Gwetom, head of the Ministry of Education branch in the subzone, remarked on the event as integral part of the annual academy calendar. He praised the participants, students and their coaches for showcasing a remarkable spirit of competitiveness throughout the week. 
Mr. Zar Ayberha, administrator of Molki Sabzon, pointed out that crucial role of the event in promoting physical and mental well-being among students and instilling valuable social norms. And he urged the community and the governmental organizations to actively support objective set forth by the event. The week concluded with presentation of prizes and certificates of recognition to outstanding students and schools as well as to all participants in acknowledgement of their achievement and contribution. The viewers will be back with the international news shortly. Stay tuned. Welcome back. China has launched out after U.S. Secretary of State pledged that his country is stranded ready to back Philippines' Beijing regional rival. Antony Blinken promised on Tuesday during the trip to Manila, Washington retains an ironclad commitment to defend the Philippines. The United States has been deepening diplomatic and military contacts with allies recently as tension with China rising Beijing promptly responded to the U.S. official statement insisting that the U.S. has no right to interfere in the South China Sea where Beijing and Manila have competing territorial claims. Tensions has risen in recent months with incidents including a collision between Philippine and Chinese vessels near dispute. And our last news. All schools have been ordered to close in South Sudan as prepared for the heat wave in which temperatures could reach an exceptional 45 degrees centigrade. Authorities said children should stay indoors and that the extreme weather could last for at least two weeks. Deaths related to excessive heat have already been reported, officials said on Saturday. Residents in part of the capital Judah Juba rather sweltered without electric fans on Monday as heat sparks power cuts. The street of Juba, home to more than 400,000 people, were largely quiet in the afternoon as local media reported temperature of 41%, 41 degrees centigrade. It is exceptionally early for South Sudan to experience such heat. Temperature often exceeded 43 degrees centigrade, but only in summer months according to the World Bank Climate Change Portal. Children in uniform could be seen walking back to their homes, having been turned away from schools on Monday. Dear viewers, we've come to the end of tonight's news. Let's have a quick recap of the headlines. Activity Assessment Meeting of PFDJ Northern Red Sea Region. Workshop on preventing harmful practices in Gashbarka region. China blasts U.S. declaration of ironclad alliance with Philippines. Extreme weather shuts schools and cuts power in South Sudan. That is all the local and international news viewers. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.